So the next thing we're going to look at is our spread. And our spread is kind of indicating the variation in the data. So two things that we often talk about with spread would be the IQR and the range. Um, and so to keep these things specifically in mind for yourself, the IQR talks specifically about the variation within the middle 50% because it's looking at just the, wi just the width of the box. So that's the Q1 or Q3 minus Q1 or the upper quartile minus the lower quartile depending on how you think about it. And it is just the width of the box. The other one that we're going to look at is our range. And this gives us our variation um, across the whole sample, basically. So this will include um, outliers and other effects like that. So this is max minus min. So the nice thing about IQR, again, is it's sort of like the median. You're not going to be talking about... Um, you're not going to be having to deal with outliers with the IQR. It usually doesn't get affected by the extreme values, which is quite nice. And another one that we sometimes talk about is our standard deviation. And this is um, a, an indication of variation, but we would only really use the standard deviation when we're talking about the means. Um, so if you do a statistic report using the means, we'd want to talk a little bit about standard deviation. So it's variation, but only when using your mean to compare. So here, since we're talking about medians, we'll look at our um, lower quartile, or our IQR and our range. So the interquartile range for the forwards is 12.2 kgs, whereas the interquartile range for the backs is 7.5 kgs. So where's the 12.2 come from and the 7.5 come from? So our IQR This is again Q3 minus Q1. So that's Q3 is the third quarter, Q1 is the first quarter. So here we would have 117 minus 104.8. And then for, and that's for the forwards, and for the backs, you would have 95.5 minus 92. And for your range, of course, it's min minus max, or sorry, max minus min. So for the forwards, you're going to have 137 minus 98. And for the backs, you would have 105 minus 77. So that's where those numbers are coming from that they're talking about here in their answer. Um, so there's your interquartile range. Giving your evidence, make sure you give your numbers again, what the numbers are. So the interquartile range for the forwards, being specific to the forwards, is uh, 12.2 kgs, whereas the interquartile range for the backs is 7.5 kgs, indicating that the forwards have more variation in their weights than the back backs, which is true. So more variation, I might say here, of the middle 50% in their weights than the backs. Overall, visually, the forwards seem to be slightly more spread out than the backs. And so if you wanted to here, you could also add in the range comments. So I noticed that the range for the forwards is, you know, whatever it works out to be, and the range for the backs works out to be this as well. And you can kind of tell that you've got potentially an outlier or something unusual to talk about here with the big data point. So for spread, um, it really is just trying to give some sort of indication about who's got more variation. And if you look at that again, the forwards have a wider box, so that kind of shows that they've got more variation. You can see that their dot plot is sort of spread out. There's lots of little peaks. The backs, the box plot, the, you know, the inner quartile range there is much more narrow. You can see the boxes kind of squashed together. And there's kind of a clear peak in their data as well. So if you look at the forwards, there's a lot more variation in the data. And the backs, there's a bunch that are similar to each other, and then a few on the extremes. And the forwards, again, there's, you know, all over the place throughout the data set with a few extreme values as well. So visually, that would be another indication that you've got more variation in the forwards.